So something pretty cool is happening on Jupiter right now, and I'll get to that in a sec. But Jupiter is back in the sky and it's almost at opposition. So a lot of us have our high focal length telescopes out and ready to image. So people tend to fall in two camps, Team Saturn or Team Jupiter. Which one are you? I'm definitely Team Jupiter. I just like that big, massive, powerful, protostar type of planet. But there are more reasons why Jupiter is better than Saturn, I think. But what's the deal with Jupiter anyway? Some of the theories think that Jupiter is like our good big brother, shepherding asteroids away from Earth that would otherwise be smashing us to pieces. And in that sense, it allowed life to evolve on this planet. But is Jupiter actually a bad big brother? Is he the kind of big brother that's just smacking you in the face saying, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself? Maybe Jupiter's gravity is actually pulling more stuff towards us. Then again, we wouldn't be here unless the dinosaurs were extinct. So whether Jupiter's a good big brother or a bad big brother, I'm going to tell you what's going on this year that makes Jupiter so special. And I'm going to give you a bunch of tips specifically about taking photos of Jupiter. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This video is sponsored by High Point Scientific. Unlike most telescope shops, which are basically just websites with a warehouse, High Point Scientific actually have support staff who aren't on commission, so they're not there to sell you anything or push a particular brand, and they have a lifetime support on the things that they sell. So they're there to help you with your hobby or your research. What's more, they have a price match guarantee, so if you find something cheaper somewhere else, do consider giving High Point Scientific a shout and maybe drop my name. I'm sure they'll help you out. So there's a cloud clearing event happening on Jupiter right now that hasn't happened since 2007. Amateurs and professionals are picking up that the equator is clearing. So it normally appears quite white, but what we're seeing is a lot more detail around the equator band. And this may be a new weather pattern that we didn't know about before and may happen every 12 years. So keep a lookout for it and compare the photos that you take of Jupiter this year with the photos that you got from last year. See if you can see the difference around the equator. The next tip of course is opposition. You want to be taking the photo of Jupiter while the sun's basically lighting up the whole face of the planet. Well, that doesn't mean that opposition is necessarily the best time to take a photo of Jupiter. It just means it's the one where Jupiter is the biggest and brightest. Another thing to bear in mind is the position of the Great Red Spot. To get that iconic picture of Jupiter, you want the Great Red Spot there. Um, use any app to see where it is at any given time. Jupiter orbits so quickly, uh, it orbits once every 10 hours. You know that within a five hour period, the Great Red Spot's gonna be there. Try and time your photo, you if you that, want that, you to, uh, to include the Great Red Spot. Very important. What do you think, Zach? I don't know, Dad. So as I was saying, there's this weird cloud clearing event happening on Jupiter right now. And even at the time of recording this video, we've noticed that the Great Red Spot has a big plume of gas. And this is something that's just happened in the last few days. And this again is why I think Jupiter is such an amazing planet to photograph because it changes all the time. I'm definitely on Team Jupiter for this reason. It's just such a dynamic planet. So one other thing to bear in mind is the position of the moons. Jupiter has a bunch of moons whizzing around it and this means that you can take photos of the moons transiting the planet and as it goes across the planet you'll see a little shadow across the surface of the planet. Uh, now if you take a photo at opposition you're not going to see that shadow because the shadow will be right behind it but if you take it slightly out of opposition you'll see the shadow at an angle. So bear in mind the moons as well as the great red spot when planning your Jupiter shot. Are you uh, team Saturn or team Jupiter? Saturn. Saturn all the way? All the way. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Why? Because how I like my sheets. Now of course the key to getting a good Jupiter shot given its fast rotation is that you can't take too long on the one image 
because as it rotates it's going to blur. So if you're taking a one shot colour image you don't want to run your capture video for longer than say three or four minutes max and if you're doing individual filters I usually stick to about 45 seconds per filter. That way when you go to combine you're still within that three minute period to take one clear image. Now I have another video, 20 tips about taking photos of planets. All of those tips apply here as well. But this is a video about Jupiter. If you are taking photos of Jupiter, you can of course do them in color. You can do them in mono, which is gonna get you much better results. Or you can use the methane band. So a narrow band cut filter for methane or IR. And using the infrared filter will actually give you nice surface detail. And that's a good one to use for your luminance layer. Another trick, however, if you're combining RG and B filters to get a color image of Jupiter is to combine as RRGB where you're using the red layer as your luminance layer. Red will always be sharper, blue will always be scattered because of the atmosphere so it tends to look blurrier than the rest and of course on a night of really good seeing the blue is going to be a bit sharper than that but it doesn't really matter if you're using your nice sharp red layer as your luminance. And of course, because Jupiter has a very fast rotation, you don't have to stop at just one image. You can take a whole series of images and then stitch them together as, an, say, an animated GIF. And of course, an animation of a planet is much more visceral and cool than just a static image. So be sure to take a series of images and animate that planet. So I've got Jupiter live now. It's uh, currently going through the green filter. Uh, but you'll notice that it's fuzzy around the edges and that's normal as you're shooting through more atmosphere around there you're always going to get the clearest detail right in the middle head on so if you do take a series of images for your animation you can actually derotate them into a single image using software like WinDupos. you can do that with other planets too but this is particularly good with jupiter was going to be a very triumphant sort of video with me imaging Jupiter at the end of it but it just didn't work out the data I got last night was horrible the scene was horrible my color filters weren't working but we can still make some observations this is last year's versus this year's and there is some funky stuff going on with the red spot it's not clear here so it is also worth checking with other people on Twitter and Instagram and seeing how theirs is going as well but we can also see the wake has changed we've got with this cloud clearing event, we've got four distinct bands across here coming off the wake. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this develops. Another thing that we notice is that if we compare the size from last year to this year, this year is actually slightly bigger. And I went and checked this, it's true. The distance between Jupiter and the Earth is getting smaller and smaller each year. So for the next couple of years, it's just going to be better and better oppositions and we're going to see the planet bigger and brighter each year, which is great. Now, another cool thing you can notice from your own personal observations as well is the ablateness of Jupiter. If we take a circle selection and hold down shift so it's a perfect circle, you can see that fat bulge around the equator. Now this is caused by Newton's laws of motion. If you spin something, it will bulge along the middle. Uh, it's why we have a more or less flat solar system and flat galaxy. When there is a planet of enough size, it too will bulge. The Earth has a bulge as well. But very interestingly, if you do that same experiment with a solar image, the sun doesn't look very ablate at all. And this is one of those mysteries of science and something you can measure on your computer, just like this. Well, I need some sleep, but I have one more tip for you, and that's that you can take a photo of Jupiter in the daytime. If you Google Jupiter daytime, you'll find a bunch of images where people have taken it in a bright blue sky. And it's one of the few objects that are bright enough to actually do this. So it's worth the challenge if you're up for it. Once again, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to give High Point Scientific some love if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.